Hi, how are you guys? So today we're gonna make a live up until like 12.30 where we're gonna learn salutation expressions for when you meet a person, for when you say bye-bye to a person. We're gonna learn the Arabic child alphabet, which some people call Arabizi, other people call franco arab alphabet. And what else did we say we're gonna learn? Like a conjugation of a very initial verb, uh, basically verb to want. And another verb so we can make a sentence with it. So if you're ready, leave a comment so we can start. Oh, somebody left a comment. Let me see now if I can do it like this. So this is the book. Unfortunately, I don't have my stand with me. So it's really hard to, but I'm gonna do it like this. Oh, one second, let me check. Um, maybe if I do it like this, let me see. Is everything visible? Is it clear? Perfect. So I'll take the opportunity to start with the chat numbers. So when we write between each other in the 90s, there wasn't like uh, an Arabic keyboard. So these guys from Lebanon, uh, actually nobody knows who invented the system. They say it started in the chat and like the MSN messenger chat boots, you know, so they needed... And also because there were these phones that only had like numbers, but then you had to press multiple times to be able to get the letter. So then idea came to use numbers to represent certain letters that don't have a Latin equivalent. When I teach, I teach using those because I want the person to focus on this, on like the sound, not on Hi Rose, Bine Vinit, Be Live. <laughs> Uh, I want people to focus on like the sound of um, the words, not on how they're written. And then if the person wants to like uh, dwell uh, deeper into the subject, then I teach him the alphabet and then we work on reading and so on. Actually, I ordered um, a couple of reading books from Lebanon because on reading books, you can get all the diacritics, all the vowels, everything. Okay, so let me start. So this is like... <sighs> Are a busy system. After the lesson, you can text me, uh, you can P DM me, and I will send you the lesson. Uh, everything I write, I mean, I'm gonna try to write as good as possible, and if I don't, I will rewrite everything and then send you on your emails. Mats shokat kredyam kusuntiat strain respect maxim. Poi entrom fel sent. Nu pot vorbi pentru că sunt acum în lecție, da? 
da, dacă vrei scrie în engleză ca să nu fiu nevoit să mă mut pe română. So I was replying to someone's comment in Romanian. We're going to go back to English. So the Arabizi, what is the Arabizi? Again, so it's a system that we invented to be able to communicate easier at a time where there wasn't an Arabic keyboard, at a time where everybody was MSN messaging and at a time where like phones were like Nokia, you had to press multiple times on the same number to get many uh, letters. So we invented this system. Unfortunately, um, it stuck. Fortunately, it stuck because it's way easier and we got used to it. Now, it also helps represent the dialects way better than the Arabic alphabet can because Arabic alphabet is made for the standard Arabic. So let's dwell. The first one is number two. Why did we choose number two? Because it looks like it's equivalent. Let me add all the colors I need. So blue, this one. Uh, okay, this one, this one. This one. Yeah, I'm gonna use a lot of colors. It's not fixing. Okay, this is better. It represents this thing. If you look at it, It looks like a C, but then you go to the left, yeah, C and then to the left. What is this? This is called, it has a name, okay? The name has nothing to do, the name has nothing to do with the way it's pronounced. It's called Hamza. This is just its name, okay? Just like I'm called Ibrahim Gabriel, other people are called George, other people are called jo Joseph, and so on. So this is just its name. All the Arabic letters have names because they have been inspired by something. And because in the original language from which the alphabet comes from, like Phoenician, each letter was inspired by something. The A was inspired by the ox, the B by the house, and so on. So A, it's basically a glutural stop. Yeah? This is a glutural stop. What does this mean? You know when the English say... Lay a, give you a letter. Basically, they eat and drink their teas and they make a stop. This is the same exact sound it makes. When it's at the beginning of the word, it doesn't change the pronunciation at all. It changes the pronunciation when it's at the middle or at the end. And I'm going to give an example right now. The example I always give, <laughs> it's the word for cow. The word for cow is ba ra. You see, ba, stop, ra, ba, ra. This is the word. And then we use a different color so you can see it. Actually, let, let me use a different color. Yeah, ba, and then ra. Ba, ra, this is u. Uh. Like in Romanian, we have this. Anyways, let me take it away because it doesn't matter. So, ba, U, ra, ba, ra. Yeah? No. The next one is the three. And it was chosen to represent the ain. It's a smaller C and then a bigger C. It's like double C's. And this letter we call ain. Ain means I. Yeah? This is the name of the letter. This is not the way it sounds like. So this is the name. Yeah. Uh, a very simple example I can give with A is the following. It's Ali. The original name, it's Ali in standard Arabic. But in Lebanese, most of the E's at the end, they transform into E, like an elephant. Elephant, E. So you have the two and then you have the three. The three represents the ain. The two represents the hamza. The hamza is a guttural stop, like la'a, la'a, and so on. In this example, it's ba'ra. You see, b-a, b-a, and then stop, and then r-a. But you have to feel the stop. It's as if these letters went into a wall and couldn't continue their path. It's like ba'ra. The second 
symbol we use is three for Ain. Ain it's one of the harder letters. When I do tutoring, I work on the pronunciation word like step by step and I keep on insisting until the sound comes out right and I've managed. But because if it's alive and I cannot hear you pronouncing after me, I'm not gonna insist so much, but you can listen. Usually one of the tricks I use to help people reproduce the ain sound is by try telling them to reach with their tongue this tonsil, you know, like this part of the mouth where like it, it's a small thing that plays. So these tonsils, you reach with your tongue there, you stop and then you say A. Every time you say a word with Ain, you repeat the exercise and you only start the sound when you release your tongue. So when you release your tongue, you say the word Ain, Ain and so on. Let me demonstrate the tongue you go to the upper side of the mouth and then you say a normal a ah 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 but then when you want to say the word that has ain so let's say in this example it's ali ali or like in standard arabic ali ali the moment i am saying ah i release my tongue from up so i say ah it's like I'm throwing my tongue. I'm projecting it like a projectile to the outside. Ali. Yeah. Now, the next one, it's ha. Ha. I don't know if you've seen the video with ha, but if you've seen that video, it should help you pronounce the ha. We give it the symbol seven. So, seven. It's, it's like a C with a, da a dash to the left, or it's like a two, but from the other side. Hi, Violeta. And then this letter is called Ha. And here you will see the guttural stop at the end. This is the name of the letter, ha, harf al ha, letter ha. And a very good example to ha is the following. Ha, bib. In standard Arabic, it's habibi. It's habibi. In Lebanese Arabic, it's habibi. Feminine, you're talking to a woman, then it's habib te. This is feminine. Now, the way to make this sound. There are many ways, many examples. I've seen someone that's teaching it using a 7-up can. Like, you take the 7-up can, you open it, you drink, and the moment you, wanna, you exhale, you know, like the gassy sound, and then you say the word, like, Habibi. Another example, you can check the video uh, where I was teaching my friend how to say it. You put your, your palm like this, you know, in front of you and you exhale. You just exhale. You don't move your throat. You don't move your mouth. You don't move anything. You just... <sighs> so... <sighs> and when you want to say the word, you don't have to make the whole sound, like not the whole... <sighs> just the beginning of it and then the rest of the word. So... Ha, <sighs> bi, be. As you can see also in that video, I told my friend to start with B, B, and then say Ha, because he was saying Habibi. It's not like that. It's E, B, Habibi, Habibi, and so on. The next one. The next one, it's it's the five. The five represents this letter. It's like ha. So it's also like a C or like a two on the opposite way. And then you put a dot. So this is ha. And I'm gonna give an example 
but it's a bad, it's not a nice word, <laughs> okay? So shit, shit is khara. I always teach this because there's no, like, there's nothing called like bad word. And it's easy to remember because it's funny and you will use it a lot or you will listen to it a lot. So the word is shit. Ah, it's the easiest one. Gio, if you want another word, we can use. Uh, like, okay, let's use another word because Gio felt ashamed. Let's use another word. Why it's not writing anymore? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we like our khaz, khardal. Okay. Mustard. Anjad, bro, and all of the risa, I teach this like khara with everyone at the beginning because first of all, it makes them laugh, it takes them by surprise and because they're not expecting me to teach something like that, you know? And it's really funny because every time the reaction is different and it's never the same. So, a, a, ha, kha, and the last one, which is like, um, DM me in private. I can send you the link of the school that teaches Aramaic for free. I'm gonna restart my lessons soon, so maybe we can be in the same section. So, this is the last one. It's called Ra. If if you know how to say the French R, then this is it. If not, then you take some water and uh, do like you know when you're washing your teeth. And you drink water, like when you put water in like, so the beginning of that sound and you say the word like, غربي. you know, when you live outside as an expat, you are in the غربي. you are an expat, you are outside of your patri or your country of origin. So, or I usually give the word غريب. What does غريب means? غريب means strange. It also means stranger. Yeah, I saw it. Did did you see the one with the 7-Up? It's a really good video. Um, I also teach it in many different ways. So every time, depending on the student, I teach the Ha in a different way. The 8 is Ra. Ra is Rain. That's the name of the letter. So Ha, the name of it is Ha. The name of Rain, of the 8 is Rain. And I'm going to show you. So it's the French R. It's like... Je voudrais parler r. So let's go back. Uh, first, let me write the name of the letter here. And then Okay. And then the rain. Rale, rale. If you're from the north, you would say rale. <laughs> Rene, uh, garib, uh, ramra. There are a lot of words with ra. I really think it's an underrated word, uh, letter, to be honest. So, the, the word I'm gonna use is the following it's garib. It means strange, stranger. Weird. It has all these meanings and it changes according to context. So, you see? A, A, Ha, Ha, Ra. They have usually three vowels, three long, three short vowels, one that is a non vowel, and what else? Uh, and s several other vowels, but the main are three short vowels, three long vowels. We usually write them as 
symbols above or below the letter. You only find them in children's book where you have uh, like reading sections and so on. But in adult books, you don't find them anymore. So, Ba'ra. Exactly, like Malik owner, Malak angel, Malak uh, uh, king, uh, milk, I own. So, but sometimes the same word can have many meanings, like Tayyib. Tayyib can mean, okay, uh, Tayyib can mean like really good hearted. Tayyib can mean stupid. Tayyib can, can mean like I'm preparing a surprise, but usually it's a negative surprise, like a beating, and so on. And it also means tasty. So it has like six, seven. Uh, meanings and how do you know which one is which it's from the context yeah of course ma'am i was uh, still saying them all like hadal insan tayyib this guy is a nice guy but if you say it sarcastically it means this guy is uh stupid <laughs> naive uh, if you say like uh, it, it means like oh my god the food is so tasty but for example um you can use it also in a vulgar way. Because, okay, I don't know why it's vulgar, but it is vulgar. Like, if you want to say a girl is very beautiful, you can say, Uf, But it's not nice to say that because it's very vulgar and you will most probably get a slap on your face if she hears you. And um, what else? So we have a lot of meanings. Gharib means strange. It can also mean stranger. Hayda and San Gharib. This guy is a strange guy. is a strange human. Or, for example... He is strange to me. Like, he, he's not, I don't know him. What else? Um, like, you're so strange. But sometimes if, if this person is saying it playfully, of course, it's just like a compliment. Like, I love you, man. <laughs> you're so weird. But sometimes it can be mean like, dude, you shouldn't be out in society. <laughs> they should interd interdict you to go out of the house, you know? So, Hamza, Ain, Ha, Kha, and Rain. Okay? You don't have to take screenshots. As I said, everyone who wants the lessons, he just can, like, send me his email. After the live, I'm going to send you all this lesson. I think of putting this also on YouTube so you can watch it whenever you want. So, once you're ready and you're okay with all the meanings... Tell me so I can move on to the next concept. Yalla, yeah, yalla is one of my favorite. Like, yalla, let's go. Yalla, like, come on. Shoo, la bukra, yalla. Uh, or like, um, it has so many meanings. I'm going to do them all in clips. But the first two. The first one is a guttural stop. What does a guttural stop mean? So when you're speaking and somebody's directly stop you, like I'm speaking, uh, 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 you know, like, uh, 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 like you don't have any more air to say the rest of the words. Like, uh, and this is a guttural stop. In English, they use it like, uh, I'm gonna see you later. Uh, get me the letter. So they basically drink their teas because they're English. They like tea, and in in Arabic, it changes the pronunciation only at the middle, at the end, at the end, not at the beginning. If you put it over the alif at the beginning, or you don't put it, nobody cares. But in the middle and in the end, they care. You want me to give you another example on it? Uh, you'll DM me in private and I'm going to sell you all the details. After the live, of course. It's Western Syriac to be more exact. Violeta, do you want me to give you two different examples of one with guttural stop and the same word without a guttural stop? Basically, it will be comparing standard Arabic to Lebanese Arabic.
Yeah, I'm asking you, do you want me to give an example on the two? I can give one from standard Arabic and one from normal Arabic, so uh, from Lebanese Arabic, so you can see the effect of the Hamza on the word. Okay, perfect. So let's zoom in and then turn the screen like this. And we're going to write hopefully here. Okay. Let's use this. So the word for mouse, it has many varieties. Okay. So here, standard Arabic. And here, Lebanese Arabic. In this case, they are very similar, but the pronunciation is only slightly different. And you will see why I'm saying slightly different. So, let me draw our flag. I like our flag. Okay. And now, in standard Arabic, it is the following. This is the Alif with the Hamza, okay? The Hamza is up, and this is the Alif. Now, I'm going to write them in Latin as well, as I promised. So... Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> and now in Lebanese. As you can see, the Alif doesn't have a Hamza anymore. And the, the transliteration is the following. De rien. Pentru nimic in francese. De rien? It's a Lebanese. It's probably from Aramaic. Let me see. Okay. Guest? Ahlan. Marahib. الحمد لله الحمد لله مش حنطول الانترودكشن بيني وبينك كثير بس نحن فينا نحكي بعدين ان برايفت ما لنا مشكله بس سو جايز جيو جويند اس اي ثينك هيز نيم از جورج اف اي ام نوت مستيكن جيو تشرفنا تشرفنا مينز اي ام اونر تو ميت يو Exactly. Uh, the answer is ma'riftak, or we can say fiqh, which means in you, but it actually means not word for word. It means like, I'm honored to meet you. you know? Exactly. But Joe, uh, we're not yet at the expressions. We're going to get there. <laughs> I, I don't want to like put so many information because uh, all, all together, because people will get like confused. Thank you. Like you can join standard Arabic, like concepts from standard Arabic, not standard Arabic with, so you can like make the, the difference, you know, because like, look, exactly. So here you have the word for mouse. In Lebanon, we say far and for feminine, we add a, an A. Usually all, all nouns that end with A or E are feminine. That's how you make them feminine. But why A or E? Yeah. Uh, e, not like the English E, it's like the French E, like E. Like, but the idea is some words, they keep their original uh, uh, way of writing from standard Arabic, like in this example, Farah. But if you look at other words, most of them, they have E at the end. They don't have A at the end. Only exceptions, they have uh, A. Uh, like, I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to try to find an example right now. Yeah, like Caleb. Caleb means dog. Masculine. If, if it's a female dog, we will say kelbe. We put the e at the end. 
even though most of them end with a we cannot use this as a rule because some of them have exceptions uh because and they keep their form from standard arabic the idea that you have to take into consideration just that everything with a or a at the end the letter that doesn't make part of the word itself it's feminine now in standard arabic if you see the guttural stop how does the pronunciation change so far becomes fa'r fa'r and for female uh, um, uh, mouse it's fa'ra but we don't use it and definitely not for the computer we don't say for the mouse fa'ra we we still call it <laughs> we or and neither fa'ra we still call it mouse mouse is mouse but in arabic alphabet that's it or or in arabic Yeah, just don't say Kalbi in Lebanon. That's a disrespectful word. Uh, I know, but like, I don't know if you know, girls between each other, they say like Kalbi, Shuya Kalbi, Shuya Hamara, like what's what's up dog, what's up uh, donkey, but all in the feminine. And girls between each other, when they're really close, otherwise don't, never, never use this. We say like, what's up dick, like Twitter. And like, um, we have a lot of vulgar stuff that we use, but not with people we don't know. Yeah, give you an don't example. use that. You'll get shot, wallah. Ada, ada, man. So I'm going to give you an example. Um, th this is an example that's more, uh, like, honest. Not honest, like, more innocent, let's say that. So you have sabaho. Sabaho, it's an expression we're going to learn in a bit. It means good morning. Yeah. <laughs> There's other vulgar way to say good morning. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll wait for Tia to join, and then I'm going to continue. She's my classmate. She's my classmate. Ah, I want to leave. How do I leave Tia? Okay, bye Tia. So you back could to say our... Sabah al something. I'm not gonna say yeah. it. Sabah al. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Sabah al khair, which means al -khair. morning of peace. The one he wanted to say, I'm not gonna don't say it right don't now. Say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. And Sabah. Sabaho is a shortcut of Sabah al khair because we Lebanese we're lazy. We like to shortcut everything. Yes. And if we can find a word that's a foreign word, but we like it, we make it Arabic word, and we're going to come to that. For example, if you want to say Google it, we say Gawgula. Gawgula, exactly. Live. Hi. <laughs> this is like someone who's smoking a cigarette with his friends on the campus. And yeah, then like, Bye, I'm coming back. And then he comes back. <laughs> we already yeah. heard your laugh, so it's okay. Kelvi. Oh, oh! You remember you, when you said Kelvi to like, you remember she's saying the same thing. Yeah, I know. Like girls between each other in Lebanon, even my sister when she talks with her friends, like he to Kelvi, Hayawani, and so on. Like I think it's endearing in a way, but I find it really weird to translate in other languages. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. Like you could say, for example, Masan, uh, Masan, uh, Allah, no. may God uh, bring. Is, uh, is Egyptian. For example, if you say "Yubarni Allah," it's mean like "May God bury me." It's gonna be so weird to explain. Yeah, but to don't use it the way Gio is saying because it's very um, like gypsy-like, you know, like not very. <laughs> Man, you're too funny, Wallah. You're the best teacher. Thank you. So let's go back. So where were we before everything uh, changed? Ah, sabaho. So sabaho, it's good to use between your friends. It's good to use. Like with anyone you know that is close, but not with older people, especially if they're not in your village. Like, especially if you are in your village. If you're in Beirut, everybody is very familiar. You can say sabaho to most people. Nobody gives a, a, a damn about like your pol like this very polite uh, distinction. But in your village, if you go to someone older than you, you don't know and you say sabaho, he might give you like this eye, you know, like very weird look. Okay. Uh, by the way, Gio, uh, the Aramaic I'm learning is Western Syriac. Syrian yeah, Arabic. No problem, no problem. As long as it's Aramaic. La, no. Yeah, it is Syriac. Syriac is one of... Let me yeah, give it to you. Yeah, so please uh, mute yourself if you're not... Uh, okay. Anyways, so... Don't let her come back, okay? She's I don't know how to block her. <laughs> <laughs> don't block, but don't let her come um, back. Okay, so, so basically, is it like close to the the aramaic was spoken like 2000 years ago not really and yes at the same time i'm gonna explain so aramaic mm -hmm. is a very uh, ancient language you know difficult. that 
Yeah, it was our language before we were Arabized. But the idea is, yeah. Aramaic was also the language of the Assyrian Empire. And every language that is the language of an empire, like Arabic was, like uh, other languages were, like Latin and yeah. so on, and Greek, yeah. they suffer something called the glossia, which means the language that you speak is very different from the language that you write and like the literature language. Yeah. So gotcha. it's like two different languages, like, like Arabic. And the idea is like at one point, Aramaic was the imperial language of uh, Iran, ancient Iran, which was Persia in Latin, and also uh, the official language of the Assyrian Empire and so on. They extended so much that it became the lingua franca at one point. And because of this extension, it became, it had so many dialects. It, it broke down into Western Aramaic and Eastern Aramaic. Syriac is a dialect of Eastern Aramaic. Whether it's Western Syriac or Eastern Syriac, it's still Eastern Aramaic. Jesus used to speak Western Aramaic, specifically the Galilean dialect of Aramaic. Yeah, this is the exact one I'm trying to learn. This one is very hard to find out because it's dead. The only close one mm. to it, it's the one in Malula or Saidnaya in Syria. Yeah, I mean, do you also learn Turkish or just like... You, do you I have don't to... learn Turkish because uh, I watch a lot of TV shows, like <laughs> Turkish TV shows. I learned a lot of words, but I don't like it, the language that much. I like it. It's nice, but it's not for me. I'm focusing on Semitic languages because after I finish Aramaic and uh, Hebrew, I'm going to go to study uh, Phoenician and uh, ancient uh, Semitic. Religion and stuff? No, just uh, passion for oh, Semitic nice. languages. Nice. So let's go so back to our subject. Is Hebrew Sorry? hard? Is Hebrew hard? And for an Arabic speaker, it's not that hard. Oh. It's Semitic. Okay. All right, man. I'll catch you later. I'll uh, dro drop me a follow so we could like uh, DM. Sure, about sure. That. Let Make let me, how do I follow you? Okay, one second. Yeah, I did. Yeah. If you want to stay a little bit more so we can go into the expressions, I would be grateful. Okay, little more duck. Okay, merci. So Anna al Farfara, we finished with this. Violetta, if you're still here, let me know if you want for the Ain, the explanation, before we move to the salutations. You have like one minute. <clears throat> Let's wait one minute. If she doesn't reply, we're going to go to um, the salutations. And the salutation part, okay, she replied. So Ain, Violetta, let, me, let us put the screen on the Ain. So you see, Ain. This word can mean two things, and I'm going to explain. This is Ali, but at the same time, this is Ali. Ali means high. Ali, it's is the name. name, but it also means high, but only in standard Arabic. In Lebanese, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, if you want to write it in Arabic, it's Ali, and it's like, and uh, the name is just Ali. Like, yeah, let, let me give an example. So. Ah, where? So in Lebanese, Ali, we pronounce it as Ali. But this one, you put another A to prolong the vowel, the first vowel. So make it longer. It becomes Ali. And it becomes like this. So you see, the only thing that changed is the addition of the alif. In Arabic, we are very like simple. So short vowels are diacritics, are signs. Long vowels, it's the sound that the sign makes. We add it to the letter. It's like a, ah, a, ah, ba, ba. Very simple. It's like a primitive construction, but I like it because very simple. Language is supposed to be simple. It's not supposed to be complicated. So now let's go to the salutations because here I have something really interesting I want to talk about. As you can see, the book is organized the same way I'm teaching. And now, I have pretensions as well on the book. In Lebanon, we, we pride ourselves to be very generous. Um, I don't know if it's like because we're really generous or because society expects us to be generous. So we, we just succumb to society pressure and we, we just be become generous so people don't say yeesh. But to society pressure and we, we just be become generous so, so people don't say yeesh. But to society pressure and we, we just be become generous so, so people don't say yeesh. Uh, can you mute? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was like some can interference. You mute? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, 
so we don't succumb to society pressures and so people don't say oh look He's, he's, um, how do you call the guy who doesn't like to spend? I forgot the name in English. Um, one second, I'm going to ask my sister. What is the in English? Oh. Uh, and see it. Merci, mo. Your voice is lagging, bro, I think. Just uh, I think now it's Merci. better, but if you mute, I don't hear like myself twice, so it's okay. جو جيو قبل ما تعمل ميوت هاو دو يو سي بخيل بال بالانجليزي نسيت اوكي اوكي سو سو بيبل دونت سي يو ار ستينجي يو يو كونفورم تو سوسايتي اند يو ار اولسو جينيرس سو يو نيفر نو اف سام ون از ريلي ريلي جينيوالي جينيرس لايك جينيرس اور هي از جاست لايك ذات بيكوز اوف كالتشر اند واي ام اكسبلينينج ذس بيكوز لوك وين اي سي مرحبا Yeah, when I say marhaba, marhaba means one second, let me uh, Joe, what does marhaba mean? Hello. Yeah. And why don't I like the translation as hello? Because it's it's a very poor translation. It's just a non-word for word translation, not literal translation. But the literal translation is much more fun and also It's very helpful in making you differentiate between marhaba and ahlan. Because when translated, they're both hello. But when you look at them deeply, they're not both the same hello. Marhaba, it's from a root, rahaba, which means to welcome. So when someone say marhaba, he's actually saying the Lebanese version of the standard Arabic word marhaban, which means you are welcomed. And usually you reply, depending on how much you like the other person. If he's a marhaptin, it's easier. Just say marhaptin. Yeah, exactly. When you reply, you like the guy, you say marhaptin. You don't like him, you make you can say one marhaba. And if you like him, like uh, you're, he's really close and you, you haven't seen him in a long time, you can say like marahib. And the longer you say the word, the more enthusiastic you sound like. And you could say marhaptin or marhaptin. Exactly. <laughs> you're from Saida? <laughs> لا I'm from Brumman. اوكي لانه بسيدا يعني بمخته بالحكي. The second, like all of them, they follow the same rule. Like if I say أهلاً, if I say أهلاً, I reply أهلاً. But أهلاً has a different story, and I love the story. أهلاً and أهلا وسهلا. So أهلا is the shortcut of أهلاً. أهلاً, what does أهلاً mean? Ahlan is part of the expression Ahla wa Sahla, or in standard Arabic, Ahlan wa Sahla. The story goes as following. Arabs in the peninsula, before they expanded and went north and west and so on, they used to live in a tribal society. Nine months of war, three months of peace. In the peace time, they exchange prisoners next to the what is now the Kaaba. They say poetry, they sell uh, slaves, they buy slaves. It's like a big, big industry where they rest for three months in a year from fighting. And let's say this guy from a different tribe or this guy that's not even from a tribe ends up in a territory that's hostile. The Arabs were known like for the three days rule. So they host you for three days, no questions asked. They feed you, they dress you, whatever you want. But after three days, you have to say what's with you. If you don't say a good story or a very doubtful story, so if they think you're a spy for another tribe or that you mean them harm, you're gonna die. If not, you're just told to leave. The idea is how would they approach that guy who's lost and suddenly sees like a couple of weirdos just saying something to him. He would be scared because he thinks he will die. So to make him feel okay, like safe, they would say, Halalta ahlan which basically means now your family, your road will be easy. So don't worry, don't get scared, come sit with us. And that expression has been lost, like the meaning. Not all people know it unless you research it. Now we just say ahla or ahla wa sahla. When we reply, we say ahlan. And all of these expressions are interchangeable. What I mean by that is like, if I say marhaba, you can say ahlan. If I say marhaba, you can say ahla wa sahla. 
uh, you can say yahala, you can say whatever you want. We're very flexible with the way you should reply. We don't have that many rules to say, oh no, when I say this, you have to say this. So whatever you feel, you just say it. But the most important part, if you notice, we always double. So ahlan becomes ahlan. Marhaba, marhabten. And now, this doesn't apply only to native Arabic words. If you take a lot of the French loan words we use, we use like bonjour, we say bonjouren. Sometimes we say bonjourak, your bonjour, bonjourik, your bonjour feminine. The same thing with bonsoir, bonsoirak, bonsoirik, bonsoiren. So we do it with everything. And why is that? So I'm going to flip the camera and explain. So the reason for which this happens is because our culture is a bit like, like this. So I go visit you with my family or alone. You offer me like, I don't know, a, a certain amount of food. You treat me in a certain way, which is really good. You offer tea, dessert, You're like you are the great host, right? Now, when I invite you to my house, I will always try to outdo you. So when, uh, like, um, so I can always say, like, I'm not stingy, you know, like, I'm also good, not only you. And this happens in all aspects of our culture. Like, if you want to pay, someone will fight with you so he can pay. Even though he doesn't want to pay, maybe he has only like two liras in his pocket, which means it's, lira is the local currency in, Liba, in Lebanon. So let's say he, he will literally go in debt just to pay your bill. Exactly. So everything is double. You receive a compliment, you double it back. Compliments. Let's talk about compliments. You go inside a, in a house or like in a store. Meat it's store, called wahde wahde. Yeah. One by one. Exactly. So you say you go inside the, let's say the butcher shop in your village or a guy you know that has a butcher Butcher, shop. bro. A butcher, sorry, without shop. <laughs> no, butcher, butcher. Ah, okay. butcher. I have an accent, I'm sorry. No problem, okay. bro. So the butcher, if you go to the butcher, uh, he's going to say he knows you. So he's he's like, now what it? What does now what it means? It comes from... The place Nour. got blessed. Yeah, it comes from Noor, word for word. Noor means light. So basically, light. when you entered the room, it became brighter. You brightened the room. But... We Lebanese, we cannot just say thank you and just end the conversation. We have to say something even better than the compliment we, re we receive. So we say, in your presence. So for a Western culture, it might seem like a lot Basically, of, uh, for learning 24-7. Yeah. That's why when we go outside and we just speak, basically translating our Lebanese into the foreign language we learn, we're really good with all aspects of life, whether it's with women or like with negotiating, because we always have a nice smile and a nice words to say basically we're translating all the flirts we know from lebanese into the language we want the the, the next one is salam salam we don't really use it and in, in lebanon we would say salam actually but we don't really use it and it's not very religious but then as my friend Gio has said we have this one one second Salam alaikum and wa alaykum as salam this is a very interesting expression why because it exists in all semitic languages unfortunately in lebanon it has uh, it has gained a very religious connotation because usually the religious people will come to you and say salam alaykum and they expect usually, usually it's used more by muslim people but yeah. uh, even in here in the gulf like i live in uae mm -hmm. here in the gulf they use it everywhere whether you're muslim or not muslim you can say exactly. salam alaykum it just means peace be upon you or this in Lebanon, it has gained a negative connotation because yeah. of uh, 15 years of civil war we had and it was a way to for for people to differentiate each other uh, from each yeah. other and the the problem is with that is the it's a very good expression, very beautiful expression. Peace be upon you and, and upon you be peace. Wa alaykum as -salam. And it's common with all Semitic languages. So if you're learning Hebrew or if you're learning Aramaic, you will stumble ac across the same expression. Shalom aleichem. Shalom aleichem. But actually it's ha shalom aleichem. But that's very ancient. Like that's ancient Hebrew. And the yeah, reply Jesus would be... Jesus himself said uh, shalom aleichem or something like that. Exactly. In Aramaic. And, yeah, uh, it's different, slightly different, because now I, I will tell you, I'm coming there. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will come there. So uh, the answer to Hashalom Aleichem is Ve Aleichem Hashalom. So it's the same in Arabic, same structure. Ha is Al, Shalom is Salam, Aleikum is Aleichem. In Aramaic, in modern Aramaic, in like Western Syriac, we would say Shlomo. Uh, Shlomo Lochon, 
او شلومو ع ع شو اسمه كانت شلومو عكل خون شلومو عكل خون and the answer would be typically now بشينو بشلومو may you find peace but before in the Galilean Aramaic it was very similar to the Arabic and the Hebrew one which is like شلومو عليكم وعليكم شلومو almost the same more or less those are the ones we were discussing صباح الخير means good morning صباح is morning الخير the peace morning of peace but it doesn't only mean peace خير also means health like good it also means everything that's positive you know may you wake up to good news basically that's what we say when we say good night we don't really say good night we say تصبح على خير may you wake up to good news good news تصبح is from the same root as صباح صباح is morning تصبح may you get to the morning may you wake up exactly صباح الخير صباح is morning and we also use it for any time of the day unless it's evening because we don't have this distinction between good morning and good afternoon and all this uh, complicated shit in English so we say صباح الخير all day long uh, uh, actually I'm kidding you just say it until like noon and then uh, you, you don't say anything you say نهارك سعيد if you want to wish someone a good day noon just say مساء الخير خلاص exactly. it's night exactly Even though after it's 4 or 5 it's مساء الخير and the answer is always sabah, but then you change the adjective. El Nur. What does El Nur mean? El Nur means the light. So morning of peace, you answer morning of light. Uh, evening of peace, you answer evening of light. Masa al khair, masa al nur. Sabah al khair, sabah al nur. Sabahu, sabahu. Maseo, maseo. So we have also the shortcut, but we don't use maseo as much as we use as we use sabahu. Yep. And the last part of what I wanted to show you, we like to use uh, the dual form. As I said, marhaba, marhabten, ahlan, ahlan. The N, it's always is the ending for the dual form. Dual form is the easiest thing to do in Arabic. You take the noun, if it doesn't have E or A, you put N. If it has an E or A, it's feminine. So you don't put N, you remove the last uh, well, uh, you just put T-E-N and you remove the last letter from the original word. If it, if it has a, like for example here, Sabe, Sabiyan, but Binet, Binten. It has a T already. If it didn't have a T, you would add the T and then you add the E-N. If it does have the T, then you add only E-N because it's feminine. Put you? No. No. Click it up. You could also say for a girl, you could say sabi. Sabi. Sabi, masculine, sabi, feminine. Yeah. One of the typical expressions in Lebanon to ask people what's up, it's this one. Shufi, mafi. Word for word, it means what is there, what is not there. Not word for word, it means like what's up, what has been happening. It's very gender neutral, which is not very common in Arabic. Most things are neutral, are gendered, are gendered. So everything is like feminine, masculine, feminine, masculine. But some things rarely are neutral. So shufi mafi, what's up, what is there, what is there not, word for word. When we ask people for news, other than Shufi Mafi, we can say Shu Akhbarak. Shu Akhbarak, which means what are your news? Do you see the underlined suffixes they have? Those underlined suffixes, they refer to the pronoun. We don't need to write the pronoun. Like we don't say, we don't need to say like in English, what is your news? Because the your is already in the suffix. I don't have to put uh, the pronouns like in latin languages like uh, or like i don't have to put a word to refer the pronoun just the termination of the uh, word helps you identify who is being talked to so what is your news your masculine what is your news feminine what are your news because akhbar literally means news 
this one, Kif Halak. Kif Halak is a nice, like, I haven't heard people UAE. say. Everyone uses the UAE, everyone. Yeah, everybody uses it in the UAE, as Gio is saying. But You can't Lebanon, say Kifak. Kifak is like, like, what's Kifak? They will say, like, Kif Halak. Exactly, Kifak is very informal and very Lebanese, very Levantine. Yeah. They use more Kif Halak, like, how is yourself? Halik, how is yourself feminine? Halkon, how is yourself plural? And it's interesting that we also ask specific questions. Like in Romanian, I would say, how are you? And you would understand that I'm asking like about your health, about your well-being. But in Arabic, we have to precise because if you don't, he will not understand. You say, kif sahtak, how is your health? Kif sahtik, how is your health feminine? Kif sahetkon, how is your health plural? Because if you say kifak, the most common answer is Mnih. If it's not Mnih, he will say Alhamdulillah. If it's not Alhamdulillah, he will say Nishkur Allah. What are those varieties? Kattir uh, khair Allah. Exactly. Whatever. Do you know Everything. the reason for, for this, Gio? Praising God. Like, no, just what is like, the reason they don't answer directly? Just to, like, to be more respectful. No. The reason is because we are a culture that's very heavy on superstition and we believe in something we call the an, like the letter, which means the eyes. So we don't want to get oh, the yeah, eyes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, I so remember. So every time someone tells you, how are you? You say bad. You say, uh, as God wishes. Uh, thank God. You, you never say exactly what are you doing or if you're doing good. Why? Because you don't want the eye to hit you and suddenly lose business or suddenly start doing worse. So always, alhamdulillah. And also the second reason, is because as a Lebanese people, although I love my culture, we ask a lot of questions, sometimes to people we met for the first time, questions that are really private. In the West, uh, they're considered private. So like, you, you take your foreign friend with you to a Lebanese wedding, in that wedding, believe me, he will say like, he will get the questions like, oh, you're married? Oh, why not? When are, if he's married, when are you gonna get kids? If not, like, they will keep on grilling him, and the more he answers, the more they're gonna ask. The way to cut, the cycle of questions is to say Alhamdulillah, Nishkur Allah. You will keep on saying it until the person... Like, until they shut up. Yeah, until and next time, believe stop. me, they will not ask why, because they will expect another Alhamdulillah from you, and they're not... They want <laughs> something new. They want fresh stuff. So, Kifak is how are you? Masculine, Kifik, how are you? Feminine, Kifkon, how are you? Plural. As I said, praise God, thank God, alhamdulillah, nishkur Allah. Everything perfect. Thank you, Luana, multumesmud. Everything is perfect. Kilshi tamam. I'm going to show you something really interesting about Arabic. Let's go back up. So, as I said, we are a very primitive language. Primitive not in a bad way. I'm not insulting Arabic. Primitive in a very good way, because why complicate yourself like in English or like in Romanian or any other Latin language? We don't say... I am good. We say, I good, I doctor, I go. I, like, it's always without the verb to be in the present. So it's very simple. It's like, why complicate your stuff, your things and head with a lot of articles and a lot of uh, helping words and a lot of bullshit? It's very easy. I good, I doctor, uh, I home come uh, from work. Very simple. So as you can see, kif is what? Shu. No, kif is how, shu is what, saha, it's bless you or health. So if you, kif uh, uh, geo tautus, sneeze, yeah, if you sneeze, I'm sneezing, you will say saha uh, to, to that person. But if you're religious, you will say rahamakullah, but that's like he, he's, he's Muslim. 100%. This, is, this is very like, uh, it's, it's, no, not, not that really Muslim. Also, Arab Christians use it, but like it's very like to the, Formal? To the fo no, the very, very Arabic formal people, like, not the casual talkers. Like, if you're talking by text, oh, may I mean, modern standard Arabic, not uh, conversational Arabic. Uh, yeah, Lebanese Arabic is maybe one of the easiest Arabics you can ever learn. Exactly. Uh, just to answer Capybara's question, uh, it's, it's, it's tifah, written tifah, because you cannot change it in the standard Arabic, the... Yeah. Uh, uh, you cannot change it like as a as a letter in the st Arabic letters, but the pronunciation is not the fact. We have something for yeah. We have something called imala, which means the vowel shift, like in Aramaic, like in Hebrew. The a 
becomes a in the middle most of the time. So we say tefah, not tefah. We write it tefah, but we pronounce it as tefah. So sahha it means health. Now, unfortunately, when you double sahha and you say sahten, two sahas, it doesn't mean two sahas anymore. It means basically bon appetit or like, uh, how do you say bon appetit in English? I don't know how to say it. Um, uh, have a nice meal. Enjoy your meal. Yeah. So you say sahten. You can say also psahtak grammatically. Gr grammatically instead of it's saying correct, enjoy but we don't meal, use it. Psahtak is for drinking. Yeah, instead of saying enjoy your meal or like enjoy your drink or like uh, have a nice d d drink or something, just say sahha. It's one word. Exactly, sahha. Uh, if like, for example, uh, he's eating like a burger and you're jealous and you want, but you don't want to tell him like, can you give me a bite? You say sahha, sahha. Ritu <laughs> mayibla. Like all these expressions are sarcastic way of saying like, come on, dude, give me a bite. Yeah. Yeah. The, the guy, other... there's a guy in the comments. He said, uh, with shukran jazilan yarhamuka yasua. Yeah, yeah he knows bro. the standard Arabic only. <laughs> it's really nice. Like he's learning. But yeah. Like, he's yeah, Arabic he's, he's really good. I like him. Trust me. Mm -hmm. And the funny part is like, uh, so andak saha, which is one, but if you say psahtak, it means with your health, word for word. But what yes. does this mean? Where do we use it? Technically, yeah. you can use it at the food, but we don't do it. It's grammatically it's correct, but you you don't do it. Why? Because psahtak is like cheers. Another word for cheers is kesak, your cup. So by the way, uh, you, you could say nam, but to to make it easier on you, just say a. A means yeah. Uh, Naam we only use when we're talking to older formal. people or formal. if you say like to an older guy eh, he will think you're impolite so you say Naam yeah. it's the yeah. same thing Lebanon is based on ethics I swear I swear to God <laughs> all ethics I you can't find the Lebanese person uh, an unethical Lebanese person we're all uh, he, he means etiquette not like ethics like you can find a lot of corrupt Lebanese but like all have etiquette even yeah, while being etiquette. at least like they won't like they have manners you know they have because manners they will say yeah, should be all al -alam. like what would people say yeah Shame on <laughs> yeah yeah especially in an Arab family Jdid, it means new. Adim, it's old. Jdid, new. Adim, old. Tamem, it means great. More yes. like perfect, actually. Because tamma, it means to complete. So tamem, everything is complete. Everything is perfect. Now, the next one, wada, situation. Like shul wada. Here, if I say shul wada, what is the situation? I don't actually mean what is the situation. I usually uh, use this in a sentence referring, like my friends went to a club, I call them, like how is the situation over there or for example how is uh, things in, how are things in lebanon like the atmosphere the political atmosphere and so on so it depends on context it means something else but all of them mean kind of situation now the thing i wanted to explain this is it it's very interesting so if you say there is you say fee there is not is basically mafi what is ma ma is no Oh, there is not. It's negation. It's the negation in, in Arabic, in Lebanese Arabic. And we have another word for negation. It's mish. Depending on the region, you will say either ma or mish, or sometimes you can use them both in the same sentence, but at different times. So, fi, there is. Mafi, there is not. She, it means something. Kilshi, all thing. Basically, everything. So kill is and mesh is nothing. Yeah, kill is every. Now, if you say every something, it becomes everything. So kill she, and then she itself it's something. And if you want to say no, uh, nothing, it, it basically translates into no something, nothing. No, it's ma something. No, it's ma not like in a direct translation as a negation. I mean, and something is she. So negation of something it's nothing uh, we don't say uh, sadiq it's standard arabic we say sadiq yeah. with uh, or we say rfi uh, rfi like comrade <laughs> you, we usually use bro in lebanon like yeah. a lot a lot a lot a lot like merci bro we we don't say shukran also we just Unless say you're a french speaker and then you will say frere <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> no, you, you don't need to say frère. You just say merci, bro. Like, we have too much. We have bonjour. We have merci. You don't need to be speaking French. You can just say bonjour. It we're means almost good done morning. with the expressions because now we're going to the last parts of the salutations. Yeah. Uh, the last things we have is the last parts of the salutations, the verb بدل... private, but هيك, you know, at least you show them your style, you show them how, the, how you teach, you show them like the whole thing, you know? Yeah, cool. So the, the last... The last things are the, you know, please, thank you, bye-bye, these things. Then the verb to want. And then one verb to use in a sentence with the verb to want. That's it. And we're done. So we have I want 20... to give you a hard time. Two. I want to give you a hard time. Eh, but the back. I will explain everything, so don't worry. So, no, Iza... so The literal meaning is so, like, it's so bad. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but wait, wait, let, let, let us take them one by one. So, Iza, it means if. So, there's a Lebanese proverb, very nice Lebanese proverb. Anze, Iza tarit, or ulau tarit. Lau means if, but it's only used in phrases and greetings, like the one I gave, like the proverb. So, Anze, Iza tarit, Iza tarit, or Anze, ulau tarit. What does it mean? It's a, Anze uh, in English, uh, it's, ah, it's the word. The la, 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 uh, sheep, it's the wife of the sheep. Anzi goat, goat? <laughs> oh, no. goat, yeah, goat, goat. So, goat, it's a goat, even if it flies. What does this literal translation mean? It means people, some people are very uh, hard, um, uh, like they're, they're, they're hardcore and they don't want to uh, understand in any way possible, and they are very, um, uh, stubborn, stubborn, yeah, they're very stubborn. And they will still believe what they think, even though you prove them it's not true. The way we're very polite, so we say ma'roof. Ma'roof, it means a favor. Every time we go ask someone something and he doesn't want, we can insist, like, amol ma'roof, please. Literally, it means do a favor, do me a favor. And we conjugate it. Amol ma'roof, uh, it means not like it's written here. It's with an O, not an A. This person who wrote the book is from a, uh, from a different region and she says Amal Maruf, but we say Amol Maruf. Amol Maruf, it means please make me a favor. Amel Maruf, feminine, give me a favor. Amelo Maruf, plural. Another expression, if you permit, like uh, pardon in French or like excuse me in English, it's exactly, I'm all ma'roof like Gio wrote it, not like in the book. Law samahit for a man, law samahti for a woman, law samahtu for a group of people. The last one here, baddi azbak, I want to give you a hard time. Basically, it's actually to torture you word for word, but that's not the real meaning. Baddi azbak is like, I know this is going to be annoying for you to do, but please do it. I'm going to give you an example. I'm sitting in the room with my sister. I want my sister to give me the remote control, which is far away from me. I can say, I'm really give me the remote. I was thinking of the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> or I can say, Lau samahti, give me the remote. Or the, the cherry on the top, I would say, but the azbik, atini <laughs> remote, which means I want to trouble you like because I know she's she has to get up and like move her uh, shake her uh, body and like go to the remote control bring it back it's a lot of effort again we're lazy people so but the azbik and anjad this is it means really but we use it in a lot of sarcastic uh, is Lebanon uh, Lebanon or Lebanon, Lebanon, Lebanon. yeah Lebanon. Lebanon or Lebanon or Lebanon depends or where you're from but not Lebanon not Lebanon. You could say Lebanon if you're talking formally. If you're Standard. saying this, Le Lebanon, you say Lebanon. Lebanon. Exactly. Uh, my, uh, so the last one, Killak Zo. Zo means taste, sophistication. So Killak Zo, you are all full of sophistication. You are full of taste. If you are. Real meaning, you are very generous. Exactly. Or you're nice, or you're polite. Now, if you are the opposite of all these things, you would say balazo without taste. It's like exactly. food without um, salt. Exactly. Lebanese people will not eat anything without salt. If it doesn't have salt, they will put salt. Or olive oil. 
Yeah. <laughs> and an jad, it's it means really. Uh, but if you say it in a sarcastic way, anjar, like, do you actually believe me? Do you actually believe I will believe you? Like, seriously? Or you say, Wallah. Like, if you... Wallah. Like, that means like, <laughs> exactly. Like, 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 seriously, bro? Wallah. <laughs> exactly. This is a formal one, again. Is a betrayed if you want, if you allow. Let me take so is a betrayed if you want, but basically you're asking him like it's like the English, please, please give me something. But here we give him the option, like if you allow, if you want, if it's your will, you know. But it's just an expression that so you don't come off as rude. We hate to come off as rude because oh, what will people say? I have so, it's, it's, it's in our blood. What will the people say? Yeah, everything oh, is revolving around two concepts. God. God, community, Arab, and people. <laughs> so you don't go out of your house without putting half a kilogram of perfume on you. <laughs> you don't go out of the house without turning on the car and going to the nearest supermarket. Even if though it's 10 oh meters away, God. you'll still go out with your car because you have you to wear a take suit. Public you have to wear a suit exactly. to the supermarket. You have to. Exactly. Like, why go in the public transportation and get all like sweaty and stuff? No, no, no. You're a gentleman. You take your car. You put air conditioner, you put a song of Fairuz, or if you're was was, you put a song of uh, some like gypsy guy from Lebanon, and you go to the supermarket. Now, the most common, <laughs> so here I said, is a betrayed male, is a betrayed you feminine, is a betrayed plural. The nicest word is shukran. Everybody in the world, even Chinese people, they know shukran. Shukran, thank you. It comes from the root shakara, which means to thank. For example, shukran means to th thank you, right? Mashkur, I am thankful. Mitshakir, same thing. Um, and there are a lot of words I can come up with right now, but let's go to the next one. If you want to say, like, bless your hand, or like you want to say, uh, so I said shukran, you want to say, no need for shukran. I can say tikram. I can say uh, shukran. No, so sorry, sorry. I, 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 went, uh, I went in all directions. I made a mistake. So shukran means thank you. Another way to say thank you, it's yislamo. Like man, I yislamo, it's, it's a shukran. What's that? Uh, if you're fifteen minutes, you'll be happy. You'll be happy. Oh, but it's not enough, bro. Sorry. Like, not enough. 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 Like, تمام برو يلا ثانك يو سو ماتش والله كان كثير فاضي حبيبي ميرسي كثير على البارتيسيبيشن حبيبي على راسي يلا باي 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 سو يسلموا اتس ا شورت كات اوف ذا لونجر اكسبريشن يسلموا هالايدين او يسلموا ايديك ويتش مينز بليس يور هاندز بيكوز يور هاندز بريبير ذيس فور مي ليتس ساي ماي مام كوكس مي ا فيري جود دينر اي وود ساي يسلموا هالايدين يسلموا هالديات ليتس ساي If someone does a manual work for me, I say, Yislamu Haddayyad. If someone does me a favor, Yislamu Haddayyad. But the shortcut of all of this, it's Yislamu. Killakzo, we said it. Killikzo for a feminine and Kilkonzo for the plural. Again, if I say thank you or Yislamu, you can reply Tikram, which means may you become even more generous. Why? You were generous with me. You were nice. I'm thanking you. By saying, I hope you become even more generous so I can receive even more stuff in the future. Tikram. Masculine, tikrami. Feminine, tikramu, plural. I can also say ahlan instead of tikram. And I can say walaw. Walaw, it's the nicest, my favorite. Why? Because when you say walaw, it's like, seriously, you're thanking me? No need for thanks, man. Walaw, like, there's nothing between us. This is the literal translation of the expression, manna baynetna. Which means, like, you don't need to say thank you to me. We're like family. Like, seriously, you need to thank me? I thought we're over this, you know? Walao. Or if someone does something obscene, you will say walao. Like, hatirem halak. Walao. Respect yourself. Or if, like, you're, you're shocked when you see something, it's like walao. Like, really? What, what, what the hell is happening? If you see a, a, two guys fighting in the streets, like walao. Balamokh, like they, they are brainless. What's wrong with them? 
here when you want to tell someone like please please go ahead you can say or come in you would say tfaddal for masculine for a feminine tfaddale tfaddal tfaddale tfaddal tfaddale for plural tfaddalo 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 Those are the pronouns. The pronouns are eight. Unlike standard Arabic, we only have eight pronouns, okay? Ana, it means me. Enta, you masculine. Ente, you feminine. Some areas in Lebanon would say ente for both. Ento, it's plural, plural, you, plural, not for the respect. For respect, we have the word hadritak or hadritik or hadritkon. But this is only for more than one person, you in the plural. So, ana, I. Enta, you, masculine. Ente, you, feminine. Ento, you, plural. And then, huwe, he. We don't have it in Arabic. He, it's she, henne, they, and nehna is we. So everything that has it or something in Arabic, it has a gender. Sayara is a car. So we say, hey, this sayara, or hey, sayara. We don't say, uh, we don't have a neutral thing to use. Benet. Girl, Zalame, man, yi, walau, seriously, come on. Nahfe, epic, enta nahfe, you are epic. Yi malla nahfe, this guy is so <laughs> epic. Shwai shwai, we do like this when we say it. Shwai shwai. So we do like this. Shwai shwai, shwai shwai, like have patience. And Lahza, it means one moment. One moment. Lahza. Lahza. Lazim, I have to, I must. Ashen or le'an, it means because. Shway, a little bit. Inshallah, if God wills, but it also means no, if said in certain context. Kirmel, in, answer. Ce vrei să zici, Lara, că nu am înțeles ce vrei să zici. Ce, ce treabă are însă cu... Shui? <clears throat> A little bit? Inshallah, if God wills, but if like, let's say, mama, are you going to buy me this toy tomorrow? You're a kid, you're at the supermarket with your mom, you see a toy, and she will tell you, Inshallah, but this means no. <laughs> she just blames God for her inability to buy you the gift or for her inability to say the truth and say no. Wa or u, it's and. Kamen, it means as well, also, too. Khalas, it means enough, stop. Yalla, with a double L, it means hurry, come on. Bas, it means only, or when, or but. It has a lot of meanings. Hello. Liom means today. Halla means now. Afwan means excuse me or sorry. Smalla, it's a phrase used to avoid the evil eye. It's a shortcut of Ismallah. Alayki or alek. Alek if it's a guy, alayki if it's a woman. So smalla alek or smalla alek. The full expression it's ism Allah alek. The name of God on you. That's the literal translation. Alek masculine, alayki feminine. It's to avoid the evil eye. You never like, for example, Ali bought a new car. Smalla, smalla, smalla. Otherwise, he gets the evil eye. If someone shows you his house and you don't say smalla and knock on wood, you would knock on wood like this, just to avoid evil eye. Sometimes people go and get like the eye, the blue eye, so they can also ward off evil eyes. 
اكيد اور طبعا نو اسم الله without the A means the name of God and uh, اكيد and طبعا means of course حرام it means the uh, not permissive uh, not not permitted but in this context it means like you're sympathizing with someone like for example you see a car accident in front of you and you will say haram like oh my god if you like um, see a, a guy who's not able to get good grades at school like because of a disability you'll be like haram if you see someone like anything that uh, you see that you want to sympathize with you say haram Anjad means really, ala fikra means by the way, ala it means on, fikra idea, on idea, basically by the way. This is the last section before the goodbyes. So in this section, we're going to learn the following. Ism means name. So if I want to ask you, what's your name? I would say Shu. Ism. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so you would say Shu, Ism, and then you would add the suffix of the pronoun you're talking about. So if you're talking to him, to, to you, he's talking to, yeah, to you, I'm talking to you, I will use Ak, Ak, because it's male, uh, suffix ik it's female suffix suffix so i would say shu ism and then ak shu ismak for female i would say shu ismik what's your name for plural shu asmekun or shu uh, asamikun or or shu ismkun all of them are accepted now if we go up you will see estes and estese estes and estese they mean teacher but you can also, Estes is a masculine teacher, Estes is a feminine teacher. But the, we also use them to say sir. Like, if you see a random guy, you could, can call him Ammu, which means uncle, or you can call him Estes or Estes. If you use it in a certain tonality, it will be sarcastic. Like, yeah, like you're stupid, you know, like you're taking a ridicule of him. When you call people, you use Ya. You use ya and the name of the person. So if I'm calling over my mom, I would say ya mama. Calling over my dad, I would say ya baba. If I'm calling over, um, I don't know, Gio that left or Violeta, ya Violeta, ya whatever. Hello and helwe means beautiful. Hello, guy, helwe, woman. When it's nice to meet someone, you say charrafna, as we said before. And you can say charrafna, ism Ibrahim. My name is Abraham. And you, what's your name? Charafna. Ism Ibrahim. And the last part, the goodbyes. We, we, we are known for a lot of words for goodbye. Why? Because you go in a, on a visit. I have to explain this and you have to see my face. So you go on a visit, you might stay like for two hours. Let's say you talk an X amount of talk, but then at the door, I, I've seen that this is common with many, many cultures. At the door, you have another whole conversation. It's as if you never went to visit in the first place. So you have to like say a lot of stuff and like talk about, uh, it's very annoying. And those expressions are the following. Let me show you. Yeah, one of them is ma'as-salame, of course, which means with peace. But I'm going to say them in order, okay? Let's say you want to leave, you take permission. You will say, bil izn, like with your permission, bil izn, but word for word, it means with the permission. In this case, in this context, it's known that you're waiting for the permission of the hosts to leave. Badakshi with double D. There are a lot of grammatical errors in this book, but it's one of the best books I found on the subject. So Badakshi or Badikshi for a female or Badkonshi for plural. What does this mean? Badak, it means do you want? 
she has something. Do you want something? Like, before I leave, do you want me to uh, know something, say something, get you something, whatever, and so on? The answer would be, لا سلامتك. No, your safety. That's the word for word meaning. The not word for word meaning, it means no, thank you. You don't have to trouble yourself. Salamtik for a woman, لا سلامتك, and لا سلامتكن for more than one person. Now, بالإذن, how do I reply to بالإذن? So if I go to visit someone and I want to leave, yeah, I'll say بالإذن. They will say, إذنك معك, if I'm a guy, إذنك معك, if I'm a girl, and إذنكن معكن, if we're more than one people, person. Now, another expression, يعطيك العافية. This we say when, for example, um, Luana, can you DM me in private and I can, send, I can send you the name of the book? After the live, we're almost done. But the book by itself is not enough. Why? Because there are a lot of mistakes that I correct when doing private lessons with students. Like, I don't go with the book. I take the book as a reference, and then I modify so that I teach my accent in Lebanon. Because you have the great Lebanese dialect, and then you have accents. But here, even according to her accent, she made a lot of mistakes. But it's one of the best books on the subject. I really love this book. It's four books, actually. Book one, book two, book three, and the book of a hundred very common used verbs in Lebanese and the way to conjugate them. So, let me give you an example. My mom is all day at work. She, come, she comes home. I would say, how was, your day? how was your day, basically? If my mom is like saying, like, come on, Ibrahim, put your mind uh, to work and stop wasting time. Go find a job. Do something. I have been all day at the hospital working. She's a gynecologist in this example. So I've been giving birth to people and so on. And I would interrupt and I would say, like, may God reward you with good health. If someone comes and help me uh, in my land, I'm a farmer and he plows the land with me and so on. If someone gives you a sandwich in a shawarma place, you want to say thank you. You can say, يعطيك العافية. Word for word, it means, may God reward you with good health. Because the whole phrase, it's, Allah يعطيك العافية. But we make a shortcut and say, يعطيك العافية. For a feminine, we say, يعطيك العافية. For a plural, يعطيك العافية. هو, he, God, يعطيك العافية. هو, يعطيك العافية. And so on. The answer to يعطيك العافية would be Allah يعافيك God reward you too and make you healthy for a female the answer to يعطيك العافية would be Allah يعافيك for plural the answer to يعطيك العافية would be Allah يعافيك and the last one it's مع السلامة the one that was mentioned in the chat by live. So, ma salame, ma it means with. In Romanian, it's ku. In English, uh, in, in Francais, it's say avec. So, ma means with. El salame is pronounced is salame. This is a very complicated thing we're gonna explain next time. It's called solar and lunar letters. So, with. Peace, but it doesn't only mean peace. Salame, it means when you're intact, healthy, unharmed, and so on. And the answer would be, Allah isalmak for a guy. Allah isalmik for a girl. Allah isalemkon for plural. God bless you. And this is the end of this. What I want to do is the verb baddi. Where, where is it?
Okay, we have two more things to do. We have two more things to do. Verb to be. I'm going to give another verb so we can make a sentence with that verb to be. Okay? If you want, if you want, we can continue. If not, I know it's been a lot because the live was set for one hour and a half. We can stop and do this next time. But I'm more than happy to continue if you guys are willing to continue. I'm going to try to upload the whole lesson on YouTube. So people who couldn't watch it on TikTok or who don't have TikTok channels, but you know that they would be interested, so you can be able to share with them um, this. It will be posted on YouTube, I think, by tomorrow evening around 7 p.m. It should be online. So after 7 p.m. tomorrow, you can go in, onto YouTube and you'll find it. Sadi with a two at the end. S A D I two in Lebanese. Or fi or fi R F I two. Thank you, man. By the way, you never told me your name, <laughs> Kafibara. So, do you want to continue with the verb to be, and I give a random verb of your choice, so we can make the whole sentence? Sam. Sam. It means nice to meet you in Hebrew. I forgot the one in Aramaic. <laughs> yeah, Shmuel. God heard, right? I think Liv can correct me if I'm mistaken. Anyways, so do you want to listen to, do you want to see the last one? Okay. I will write the verb to be. This is the last one. It's also on the channel. So you can. Okay. Okay. The verb, it's albad, which means to want. Okay. I'm going to color the suffixes in a different color. Why? Because the, you will use them for the possessive. So your car, you will use car. You The suffix of um, you, 
and you will say sayara this is car suffix of you it's ak you say sayar you put a t because it's feminine so sayar tak if it's a feminine sayar tik so the suffixes you will see you will use them with everything okay so let's see let me use uh, this one first i'm going to write the common part of all of them okay Okay, so let's focus. Do you see? This applies to anything that you want to make in the possessive. Anything. You want to make an possessive, you use the suffix. What is the suffix? Those are the suffix. Those are the suffixes. And they refer to what? They refer to this. And now you get to choose the verb. So I want to what? You suggest I conjugate. Eat. Perfect. Right? Okay. Choose one. Eat, write, read. No, you have to choose one. You have to negotiate between each other. And so Luana wants <laughs> to read uh, because live is like us, the Lebanese. She likes to eat. Uh, in the Middle East, we don't eat to live. We live to eat. Our food is so tasty and we love it so much. I don't imagine dying and not eating, you know, like Luana likes to read. And Lara likes to write. So we have a writer, a reader, and a, a hungry person. <laughs> Guys, can you decide? I cannot choose because I don't have more than one opinion. I have only three and it. Okay. It is winning by one vote. It, it is. So, perfect. It... We take we, first it. It will be it. So the idea is the following: the verb to eat. This structure, which exists even in Romanian, amunca to eat. We don't really have it in uh, Arabic, but we. I would say, fa'l. Fa'l means the verb. El, this is. The definite article in this case, fa'lil, the verb of akil. Fa'lil akil, which means the verb of eating. Every time you have a verb and you want to conjugate it, the first thing you do is you take it back to its trilateral, quadrilateral, or duolateral roots. The root will never change, you see? Root. It did not change. The only thing that changed is the suffix. This sentence we call it. This sentence we call it a, what a verb sentence. Why? Because this is a verb. This is a verb. This verb helps this verb make its, its meaning. Same as in Hebrew. Exactly. Uh, okay. Let me try to read that. She. She. Shiresh, Shiresh, 
Shoresh? Shoresh, I think. I don't know if this is Yod or Wow. Yod or Wow. Yod or Wow. I think it's a Yod. Okay. Shiresh. I'll stick to Shiresh. Anyways. So, I take the root and I will show you how the root stays and the rest Shoresh. Shoresh. Okay. So, let's conjugate. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Don't worry. Just be patient so I can write them all, okay? Okay. <clears throat> yep. Everything that is in blue is additions, okay? So, all the verbs that you conjugate in the future, they will have the T, the T, the Y, the T, the N, the T, the Y. They all start like this. And then the root, the last two, which are plural, you, plural, and they, Let me write plural because I forgot to write. Okay. So, the you plural and the they, they get what? You see? The U plural and the they, they get O. O, it's, it's basically this in Arabic or like this. It indicates the plural. So this is the plural, yeah? When you have O. And then all of these, let me show you. Because you're gonna eat in the future. So all of these are future conjugations. Usually future is formed by ha, the letter ha, and the present form of the verb. 
but I'm not going to complicate things for you today. Just focus. The future has T for enta for you masculine, T for ente you feminine, Y for he, T for she, N for we, for nehna, N from nehna, you see? T, which is a, uh, it's not only a feminine indicator, but it's also used for into plural, which means you plural. And Y for henne, which uh, in Romanian, for example, henne has uh, ye and diele, which are two distinct things. Here, we don't have two distinct things. A lot of languages have distinction between them. Uh, like in standard Arabic also, there is um, uh, hum and hunna. But in Lebanese, it's only henne, and it's for both. It's gender neutral, okay? The last part... The one that you didn't see is that these are all removable. Ah. Because the vowels, as I said, we don't write them in Arabic script. There are diacritics above or below the letter that shape the pronunciation. Three varieties, three main varieties, A, U, I. A, U, I. The long ones are A, U, E, and are represented by the letters whose sounds were short in the, as short vowels. So if the short vowel is A, the, we, the long vowel is Alif. The letter Alif added to the letter before it. If the short vowel is U, the long vowel is Wow, which is Vav in Hebrew, Vav. And the last one, the E, the short E, if you want to make it long, you put a Yod or a Ya in Arabic, which makes it a long, it prolongs the sound. So as you can see, the vowels I removed, whether I remove them or not, doesn't matter. I just put them because if I say instead of Tekul, Takul, this will be Syrian. If I put uh, something else, it will be Palestinian. So those vowels changes from region to region, from zone to zone. But this is the one without the vowels. This is common. Ekul, tekul, tekle, yekul, tekul, nekul, tekul, yekul. And because you guys stayed with me until now, I'm going to show you another verb, but I'm going to conjugate it just so you can see. One second. Luana asked to write. Yeah. To write, it's a very nice. It's the root is KTB. From this root, we can make a lot of words like write, writer, library, office, katib, maktaba, kutub, books, katab, he wrote, maktub, letter, maktaba, all of them come from this root. This, if I take the rules from up, I will try to remove something wait a second i'll i'll bring it back but first let me put this here just so i can show you one second and let's move this to here Maktub means to be, yeah, or it means written, word for word. So it can be also, uh, other than meant to be, it can be written, it can also mean a, uh, as a letter. <clears throat> so let's... I want to write, yeah?
Do you see now? Is it clearer? So. Is it clearer? This can be applied to more than 90% of the verbs. So I want someone of you to do it, to type in the answer for the last one that you guys asked. So to write, to eat, and the last one is to, uh, what was it, write uh, and read. But read is a hard one, it's an exception. Uh, I, I will give you the root, one second. If someone can give me the root to read, because I'm, the root is usually kafra'a, so kara'a. But I think it's it's more <laughs> one second. No, ta'ra is she. She reads. Ra, yeah, two R A. Exactly. So I want someone to write it. It's basically this is the root. Or ra. So I want someone to conjugate it like this. Write them all in the keyboard. And we're done for today. No, actually, uh, one last idea and then we're done. But I'm going to explain it without writing something. OK. Ana baddeara. Enta. Enta, enta baddak. How do I say enta baddak shu? Shu baddak, ta'ra. Okay, with a two, not with a kaf. Kaf, it's only in the Mount Lebanon, the Druze people, the mountain people, and so on. Otherwise, it's uh instead of kaf. Uh, next, enta baddik. Ente baddik. Ente baddik. Look at the ending of them. It's feminine. So we have to put the feminine indicator. Exactly. Next one. Who a baddo? Who is he? I hope you were writing. Yeah, exactly. He a baddo. Exactly, Ilwana. Here, but the Lara is right. Nehna Badna. But Lara, you are native, so let them guess. <laughs> yes, Liv. I thought you are. <laughs> I swear to God. I thought you were in Kuwait, maybe? Or in Palestine, Palestine. 
So نحنا بدنا يلا we have three more اه كتير منيح شو بتحكي بتحكي بسم الله عليك بي فلسطيني وولد بلبنان وما بحكي بس ما بحكي عربي كيف لك عم فهمتي علي سو <تصفيق> so, نحنا بدنا يلا نحنا بدنا نقرا بيرفكت لوانا انتو بدكن تقروا بيرفكت ذا لاست وان هن بدهم يشي يا ليفور هن بدهم يقروا Without the A, without the N, leave. Yero, Y, two, R, O. So we have reached the last two ideas of this course for today. The last two ideas are the following. All these conjugations, as I said, are in the future. Why are they in the future? Because I will eat, you know. I want to eat, but I will not eat right now. The action will happen after I say it. It's not right now. You know what I mean? So the good thing is for the future, we... Just add this. You can write it as ha as well. So either like this or like this. Is it clear? So I will give the first example. I want one of you to do them all with any one of them. We will choose a call. Okay. I will eat. It will be. Do the rest. Do the rest. And the last exercise is after this. And we're done. So you do ha with every time you use future, you put ha. Ha, ha, ha. Luana, Liv, Lara, <laughs> Take your time. I, I mentioned all of you guys. <laughs> Ca să formați viitorul, ele deja sunt la viitor, numai că trebuie ca să fie viitor, viitor. Ha, ecol. Asta era prima. A doua. Putem adăuga și rah. Deci, bună. Ha, rah, sau lah, sau și fără vocalele lor. Putem și fără vocalele. Da? Toate au același scop. So, ha, ha has the same uh, usage as rah and lah. I prefer this one. Some people use this one, some people use this one, and some people like me, they mix all of them. 
So sometimes they say rah, and then the next sentence they say ha, and the next sentence they say lah. But I use this one because I'm lazy. It's the shortest one. I can write only seven and then the word. So ha ekol. How do I say you will eat? You masculine. Enta. Enta ha tekul. And then. Atekle, yes. Uh, Luana, pune spațiu între ha și cuvântul. Le pronunți ca și când sunt într- într-un singur cuvânt, dar ele sunt două, litere, două cuvinte separate. Next one. Hue, ha. Hue, ha. Hayekul. He ha. Hue Lara Kudoi did W. Kapui accent pe W. You put accent on the W. Hue, not Hue. Hue. In Palestinian, I think it's Hue. Uh, Hue. Uh, I, I don't know how you say it in Palestinian, to be honest. I think it's with one W. In Lebanese, we put du- double accent on W. So, who we? Here. He, ha. A, ah, atunci faci bine. Hue. În libaneză este hue. Deci, acum hie. Hie, hie hatecul. Perfect. Următorul. Nehna, ha. Da, așa, Lara. Hue. Yes. Poți să-l scrii cu U, cum am scris eu, poți să-l scrii cu O, atât timp cât îl pronunți HUE, nu HUE. Unii mai spun HUE, dar noi spunem hu, cu O mai mult. HUE, vezi? E același sunet. Atât timp cât faci sunetul ăsta e bine. As long as you make the sound HUE, it doesn't matter if you write it with the U or an O. As I said, those vowels are vowels that are written above or below the letter as signs. Ok. Am făcut. Și, um, deci, unde am ajuns? Am spus hue, hie, uh, nehna. Nehna. Perfect. Uh, ento. Și ultima, the last one, I want uh, Luana to answer. Henne, ha. Um, Luana, what did you forget? It's plural. So what do we put at the end of the plural? Exactly. Perfect. So, hayeklo, rahyeklo, they're all synonyms. Ha is equal to rah, equal to lah. As you can see, all of them, now it's time for this one, all of them are conjugated already for the future. Why? Because back there, I want to, 
this action here will happen in the future. That's why all the conjugations are already made for the future. The only thing missing, if you want to make the future without this, you use this and this, this and this, this and this, and so on until the end. Now, the last, the last exercise for today is the following. I want you guys to write the suffixes. You see all these suffixes? And with the pronouns, write them down and tell me when you're ready so I can give you the last exercise. And then we end the live. I put this on YouTube and you'll have access to it. So these are the suffixes. I will zoom in. Those are the suffixes and those are the pronouns. Those refer to those, refer to those. Yeah. So write them, write the pronouns and write the suffixes and then i'll give you the last exercise and we're done so as i was saying these are the suffixes those are the pronouns they refer to this refers to anna this to enta this to ente this to hue this to he this to nehna this to con this to henne and they all use to make the possessive they are used to make the possessive so note this and note this let me use another When you note them, please let me know so I can give you the last exercise and we're done. Luana, are you done? I terminat? Le notat? Pronumele și sufixele. Okay, Liv, are you done? If you're eating, it's okay. Uh, and then Lara, Lara, are you done? Perfect. This is the exercise. Let's find an empty page. Mm -hmm.
Okay. This is the last exercise, okay? When it's a feminine noun, substantive feminine, usually it ends up with a or a as we said, most of them with a except the ones that keep their original form from standard Arabic. The other ones are masculine, okay? Like alum, masculine, a pencil or a pen. Why? It's not specific because if I say alam heber, which means a, a fountain pen, a pen with ink, that's a different kind of pen. And if I say alam rsas, basically it's a pen with the, uh, how do you call the, the, the thing, the, the charcoal. So that's a pencil. So it can mean a pencil, it can mean a pen, as long as you put the adjective after you say alam. Uh, crayon is the alam tilwin so uh, alam prasim so the pix gem pixu is the alam heber the example uh, pixu ala ku graphic gra kumstum este um, ah am uitat numele <laughs> pencil is the alam ersas ersas is the lead I think no not lead what's the ersas uh, one second let me stilo is the alam heber Dar toate sunt alam. Pui adjectivul după și definești ce fel de alam este. But leave uh, what's the thing inside the pencil that you put the emoji in? It's called in Arabic we call it the sauce, but I forgot how it's called in English. Really annoying. <laughs> um lead, exactly. So, as I said, how do we form it? Noun plus T plus suffix. Noun plus suffix. Let me change their colors. Um, So, I want someone to do them. My car, your car masculine, your car feminine. Să iarte. Păi da, de asta am spus. Noun plus t plus sufix dacă e feminin. Deci, să iarte. Voi spuneți să eu scriu. Sayarte, your car. Sayartak, perfect.
Next one, your car feminine. Say Arctic. His car. Yeah, her car. So there are two ways to pronounce Sayara. You can say Sayara or you can say Siyara. Both are accepted. Siyarte or Sayarte. Siyartak or Sayartak. Siyartik or Sayartik. Both are correct. Okay, correct. Now our car. Yeah. The next one. Yeah, the last one in Sayara. Yeah, and as you can see, I added the vowel. I can remove the vowel. Same thing. So I'll pronounce them. Seyarte, seyarte. Seyarte, yeah? Why is there an E? Because as I said, if I say, Sayartna, that might be a different accent. In our accent, we, we mostly write the consonants. It's a consonant alphabet. So if I want to help you pronounce it correctly, I will write the vowel for you. And eventually after hundreds of verbs and uh, nouns, it's easier for you to uh, instinctively know them. Uh, there is no rule, you know what I mean? So, but for this structure, there is a rule. Uh, it's not the same, the, the sound. Uh, trebuie să pun adaug adjectivul la sfârșit. Să iartă hamra. Yes. Adaug adjectivul la sfârșit. Nu pot să spun hamra să iartă. Dacă spun hamra să iartă, înseamnă că roșia e mașina mea. Dar e, e ciudat. So, as I said, the vowels, we don't really write them. But when we write in the Latin alphabet, we try to write all the vowels so the person can read them exactly they are supposed to. But when I teach you, I teach you the consonants. Why? Because this, you will never go wrong with this. And any native speaker, when he reads this, he will write, he will know how to read it. So, Sayarte, Sayartak, Sayartik, Sayarto, Sayarita. Here, the pronunciation slightly changes. Sayarita, Sayaritna, Sayaritkun, Sayaritun. So, Sayarita, Sayaritna, Sayaritkun, Sayaritun. Now, the last one, I want uh, Luana to answer. So I'll first blue. You're welcome, Luana.
First, let me copy them. Okay, so here, how do I do it? This is the last one and we're done. So Luana, first one. Exactly, Alame. Next one. Keep them coming. Yeah. Next one. Next one. Keep them coming.
شكرا على المتابعة So this was the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Next time we can do uh, another type of lesson because shukran, tikram here. So any things you want to say? Did you like it? Tell me everything. We went one of one hour over what I expected, but at least we finished the whole plan for today because I had a plan and I had to follow it. So low. <laughs> Apparently live TikTok agrees with you. It's okay, Luana, you will find it all on YouTube. Uh, after uh, maximum by 7 p.m. tomorrow, I will have it uploaded so you don't have to worry. I will also put post on my channel for those who are live here with me. I will post that today, I will post the live and I will also post, post some snippets of snippets. That means like short passages of what we learned. I will post them as separate videos on um, TikTok in a way to promote the channel and another way also to remind you of the life that happened and also to say that go to YouTube to watch the full episode and so on. What do you mean? I thought it only limits it only limits like your viewership, but it's okay. We finished the lesson, so I don't mind. Oh, yeah, but it's only for like, let me see. It's for, let me see. Uh, ah. Yeah, it only limits like the, for five minutes or something. It's okay, or 10 minutes or one hour, it doesn't matter. Because the lesson is already over. I haven't smoked all the lesson. Uh, Lebanese, interesting, but I prefer MSA. Yeah, but with whom are you gonna speak MSA? It's like, you're gonna speak it with religious people. You're gonna speak, read it, read it like in the religious books. And probably if you work, you're gonna send official emails using MSA if you're working in Arabic. But other than that, you will not use it with most native speakers. So uh, MSA is beautiful. I love MSA. I love the poetry. Uh, even on news, not anymore. When I was a kid, most news were in MSA. Now, you, in Lebanon, for example, you find sometimes uh, MSA. Sometimes it's more like MSA mixed with Lebanese or full-on Lebanese. There's no more pure MSA like before. Um, like, yeah, they mix it, like they speak Lebanese and then they introduce like, I don't know. Um, I'll send it to you in private, Luan. <laughs> but it costs $20 per book. So if you get the whole books like I did, it will cost you around $90. But believe me, you will need that tutor, as I said, because as you see, there were a lot of stuff that were wrong. I couldn't correct them in the live because it's impractical, not practical. But when I teach, I usually go with them corrected because I want him to learn a consistent way of transliteration, not like one time with AH and another time with just A, for example. Shalom, Sam. Mashalom, Kham. I mainly found them in standard. Yeah, like I'm going to give you an example. So, Ahlan wa sahlan bikum, blah, blah, blah. And then they move a little bit to Lebanese or they mix or they speak Lebanese, but then for certain words that we know only exist in our dialect, we use a standard. Uh, it shifted a lot. When I was a kid, it was mostly, mostly, uh, it was mostly like full on fusha. But imagine like, for example, if you didn't go to school, I had a neighbor, she was illiterate. Basically, she doesn't know how to read and write. Okay. 
but she speaks Lebanese perfect she's native she couldn't understand when I was like I remember she couldn't understand everything on the news but if you speak to her in Lebanese she understands everything because the languages are not that similar but at the same time not that far away you know what I mean sometimes they can be really far away because Lebanese has a very big Aramaic substrate. What does Aramaic substrate mean? It means it has a lot of influences from the language of uh, our language before Arabization. And like Juwa, inside, Barra, outside, Haslo, the endings with the O and so on. But at the same time, it's not full Aramaic. So it's Aramaic uh, rules, vocabulary mixed with Arabic, mostly Arabic, and then Turkish, French, Greek, and other influences. Yeah, there are a lot. I got mine from this girl. Uh, she has an institute called Nasma. She wrote this, these four books, very organized. But I also found many other Levantine Arabic books. Um, marhaba is a very uh, controversial uh, word. Why? Because on one end, you have the root, Rahaba, which means to welcome. So, Murahaban Bika, you are welcome. Yeah? So, Marhaban doesn't seem to follow this rule 100%, but we explain it from the same root. In Aramaic, it has a much more natural uh, feel to it, and it's more hobo. God is love. Allah mahabba. God is love. More hobo. And they say that more hobo is the origin of marhaba. But since this word existed way before, we're not sure. Now, even standard Arabic is very influenced by Aramaic. Why? Because Syriac, at one point, Syriac is the dialect of Aramaic that became la lingua franca of the Middle East. Up until the Islam, it was the lingua franca. And even the Arabic dialects of the peninsula, not the Arabized people like Levant and so on, they had a huge influence from Aramaic. It was like the English of today. It was like the Greek, at one point, over all the Mediterranean basin, or uh, shores, but in the region it was Aramaic. Even the Jews, Liv can confirm, they used to speak Aramaic at one point and it influenced Hebrew so much. The modern Hebrew script is actually an Aramaic script that was used by the Assyrians. The, uh, the Jews, they call it Ktav Ashurit, which means the Assyrian writings. The Aramaic of today, they use a different system which is basically, uh, one is called Certo, one is called Estrangelo. I can show you, like, just, I'm going to scribble random things, just so you can see. Actually, I'm going to scribble similar things. So, Aleph, uh, Bet, uh, where's the Gimel? Ah. So, those are Aleph, Bet, for example. Yeah, and the Tanakh. Can you speak Samaritan Hebrew? I know they still exist. I cannot speak Hebrew yet. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Aramaic and Greek, but not only Islamization, because the people who didn't become Muslims, they became Arabic speakers. So, it, Arabo Islamization, let's say that. So, this is Aleph and Bet. And then, for example, if you look at these letters, this is also, this is called Estrangelo. One is Resh, one is Daleth. And then, like, for example, Ra and Da in Arabic. Uh, for example, uh, this is this is Sheen. Sorry, this is Kha. Uh, what else? Uh, this is Ha, I think. This is uh, Lomad, Mim. Uh, this is Kha, I think. Uh, fa. So you see, those are the letters of Estrangelo. Uh, there is another system called Certo, but unfortunately, the iOS keyboard does not have it. Uh, actually, the iOS introduced Syriac. If you go to your settings, you will find Syriac. And this is the script they have for Syriac, the Estrangelo script. It's the Eastern script. The Western Syriac uses uh, the uh, Certo script. And we, Certo is basically the simplified version of the Estrangelo script. And there's another word called uh, Medenhaya script, but... It's three different scripts for the same language. That's how big the language was. And uh, it's really interesting why it has three different. I have to go, but good night to everyone. Have a nice day. Mulțumesc, Luana. Și o să scriu pe privat, da? Să-mi trimis ceva să-mi amintești ca să nu uit. So, yeah. Certo script, Estrangelo script, and so on. And all of them, they come from the Phoenician one. The Phoenician or the Canaanite, 
the Canaanites that were called Phoenicians by the Greeks, who were living in modern-day Lebanon mostly, but also had colonies in Carthage and in other places, uh, they invented, they came up of this alphabet from the Proto-Sinaitic, the simplification basically of the uh, some shapes that came from Egypt, from the hieroglyphs, and they gave these shapes letters that represent them. It was easier for them. And then the first... The first time the Hebrew and Aramaic, they adopted this Phoenician script. The Hebrews called it Paleo-Hebrew. The Aramaic, they call it Ancient Aramaic or something like that. And then over time, Aramaic adopted uh, the, the square script. It left it for Certo and Estrangelo, while the Hebrew kept the square script, which is the modern Hebrew script. I hope this summarized everything. Kart Hadasht, exactly. Kart means city, Hadasht, the new. Ha is the definite article, just like in Hebrew, if you notice. Ha, dasht. Kart Hadasht. No, actually, in this case, it's it may, it's part of the sentence. Sorry, I'm, 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 I'm my fault. So Hadasht, it's new. If you look at Arabic, Hadatha, modernization, or uh, Hadith, new. In Hebrew, I think there is also Hadasha or something similar. Uh, Hadasha, exactly. So the word for new or modern is similar across all Semitic languages. So basically, Kart Hadash, the city, new, new city, basically. Good night, Violeta. Hamas, yeah, Hadash. And um, the funny part is the word uh, Hadash. The, the, the funny part is like the, the word for speaking in Canaanite, it's the same as in Hebrew because ancient Hebrew is a Canaanite language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you wrote Hamas H. You wanted to say Hamash, uh, Hadash, sorry, and you wrote Hamas H. <laughs> it's good you did not write Hummus. Hummus. Guys, if you can like my last clip because it's not, it's not being shared. TikTok is not sharing. I don't know what's happening. I think I might have to re-upload it. But if you can just like it for now to see if, I don't know what's happening. It's really annoying. Thank you so much. This is actually the first educational live in the history of the channel. We usually go up and smoke and listen to music, but I thought I could use my time in a better way. Me too, Sam. Shmuel. I'm going to make merchandise. I already have one with the logo of the channel, but one that involves... Aramaic, Hebrew, and Arabic, the message is like, yeah, we have a lot of things that are different, we have conflicts, we have hate between each other and so on, but at least the languages are common, a lot of traditions are common, and we have a lot more stuff in common to celebrate than stuff that separate us. So this is the reason why I called it Aleph, Alif, Alaf. Aleph in Hebrew, Aleph in Arabic, and Alaf or Olaf in Aramaic, in Syriac. So that's the... Uh, that's the thing. So I said through t-shirts, through uh, if you know someone who can draw stuff, let me know because I need designs. I have only a very few designs, but I'm going to launch a series of designs uh, where on every t-shirt you have the three languages and then I will have separate ones for Hebrew, Arabic and Aramaic, but also one that has everything in common. That's the plan for the future. It's a way to promote this unity. And for now, the only thing I have is with the logo, is a t-shirt with the logo. 
Uh, you see, one second. So the only thing I have is with the logo. And as you can see, Hebrew, Arabic, Estrangelo, Aleph in Aramaic. So that's why I chose the Estrangelo, because if you look at the Certo Aleph, it looks exactly like the Arabic. And I wouldn't have had three distinct shapes. And I wanted to have three distinct shapes in my logo. If you can help boost my last clip because it's not being spread by TikTok, I would really help. Uh, appreciate. I'm gonna close the live. I think in like five minutes. I'm gonna turn uh, the the phone a little bit to the left so I can smoke my last cigarette, and then I'm gonna close the live. Uh, as a reminder, tomorrow at seven p.m. the clip will be live. Um, make sure to go on my bio on my main page and you have the button for Instagram and for uh, YouTube and you can click. If not, you just research on, and now you can uh, you can search on Google, uh, on YouTube by the handle. So you put at and then Aleph, Alif, Alaf. You take it from the channel's name and uh, Aleph, A, uh, I will write it. And you can find me like this on uh, on YouTube. Actually, I changed the I changed it, so yeah, I I changed it into Learn with Ibra. So this is my handle, Learn with Ibra, and uh, you can find the channel like this. You put subscribe, and when the video will be live, all the subscribers will be notified. And I will also announce it on the channel. So just uh, check the channel like tomorrow or something for updates just in case I, I'm late or I need more time or something. Thank you so much, Liv. <laughs> so learn with Ibra is the handle because it's easier. You're pampering me. Yeah, I'm. For now, I'm only copying things from uh, TikTok, but eventually, I'm gonna do uh, its own thing, you know, because I don't know. I haven't taken care of it, and I was just copy pasting like stuff from TikTok, and it already grew to one hundred fifty subscribers. But I think if I, it's been two years on TikTok. So if I had uh, put my head into growing that YouTube, I would have had like at least a thousand subscribers by now in two years. But I've been lazy. And now I decided to quit my job. And uh, like actually after I got fired from my last job, I'm like, fuck it. I'm not going to work anymore at uh, corporations. I'm going to do what I love. I'm going to teach. I'm going to travel. I'm going to do Lebanese events in Bucharest, like to teach them how to eat and so on. Yeah, so I'm really enjoying tutoring. This is what I'm born for. And I'm participating like in uh, castings for like advertisements or like for theaters. But I have a stage fear. Uh, hopefully, I was hoping that by the time I get to the fourth or fifth casting, I, my stage fear will disappear. But probably I will take some courses so I can like, <laughs> the, the, you know, go over and beyond this stage fear because I really want to act. I feel like I'm a really good actor, very good facial expressions, presentable, you see, like expressive. <laughs> I think I can do a great job as an actor. Tomorrow I have a I have a meeting with the, actually tomorrow in like um, ten hours more or less I have a meeting with like uh, a producer for a uh, for an advertisement for Glow if you know the cigarettes the Glow cigarettes and uh, it's only only my hands will appear but it's really good pay so I'm happy <laughs> my hands apparently are appreciated. Yeah. So guys, good night. And see you in the next slide. <laughs> Yeah.
You're just jealous. <laughs> and I, I don't know. I find this really, really funny and weird. Yes, I'm back, Habibi. Lola, Leila Tov. Leila Tov, the uh, at? The, the, the at, and, you, and for you, how do you say and for you? How do you say and for you? Bro, we don't personalize. We, you can say Yeshua Mark, but you can also say Allah Mark because for Christians, Yeshua is part of the Trinity. He and the Holy Spirit and everything is Allah. So, Gamlach. Oh, okay. Layla Tov Gamlach. Aziz, Azizam, live. See you. Bye bye.